joining me now is Phil Teufer, Labour Housing Spokesperson. Phil, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. No, you must be our first politician to come on the show, so I'm so looking forward to have the chat with you today. Great. Look, on the recent press, people always talk about housing crisis in Auckland and affordabilities, and what's your opinion on, on that right now? Well, um, The Economist magazine said recently that New Zealand has some of the most unaffordable housing in the world. The Salvation Army, our most respected social agency, said that we have the worst homelessness in living memory. So um, we have a housing crisis and unfortunately the current government is in denial about that. But our view is they've had their turn, they've had nine years, it's been yes. getting worse for every year. It's time for a fresh approach. Well, look, I, I've been in real estate for 25 years, so I, I must say that I, I've seen the recent nine years, but I've seen uh, the current government try to promise uh, certain housing uh, solutions, but I myself haven't seen that happen. I see a lot of red tape, delays on consents, and, and it hasn't changed. So what, what, what could you do differently if you were in power? So we've got a, um, a big, comprehensive, bold plan for reform, and it's going to take uh, serious political will to drive these reforms through on a number of fronts. So the first thing is we have to deal with the supply issue, and Labor's going to build 100,000 affordable homes and sell them on to first-home buyers at cost, housing a whole new generation of young Kiwi families and increasing the supply of housing. You know, Auckland's got a shortfall of 40,000 homes yes. at the moment. Um, we're also going to reform the planning rules. You know, we don't have a shortage of land in New Zealand, but we have a highly restrictive planning system that chokes off the supply of available land for housing and drives up urban land costs. So we've got a, a plan to uh, change the way that infrastructure is financed, to, f to uh, provide more uh, finance for the infrastructure that you need in order to build houses. How do you deal with the cost? Like right now it costs I, I, I see that the land size are going back to 100 square metre, 200, 300 now. Is, mm. It's the size of land in Auckland now. And to purchase one of those land now, it costs like 120, 140,000 before sure. you're going to build your house on it. Uh, how would neighbour deal with that cost? Because to build a house, it costs another three, 400,000. So the actual cost would be like 500 to 550 mm. around there. So you're saying neighbour will provide that to the consumers at that sort of cost? So there's three things we need to do to, to drive down costs. So in the land cost, um, it's the restrictive planning system that is making the land so expensive. So right. we're going to free up the planning controls while protecting the environment. The second thing is um, we have to be able to um, build more infrastructure to increase the supply of land that you can build on. So that's our, our infrastructure bonds plan. And the third element is the cost of building. And um, we're going to bust open the rorts in the building supplies market that mean right. that Kiwis are paying 30% more for the same building materials than the Australians are. Yes, yes. So if we do all those things and we invest in the workforce, so we train up more tradespeople so that the industry is bigger and stronger and more competitive, uh, we can drive down costs. But, but here's the thing. At the moment, you can build affordable homes, but most developers choose not to. Because right. there's an imbalance of supply and demand, most developers are choosing to build uh, uh, 260 square metre homes and sell them for a million dollars because they make more profit. Right. Labor and government through our Kiwi Build policy, we're going to choose to build homes for four or five hundred thousand dollars and sell them to first home buyers. High quality but modest starter homes. How do you deal with the first home buyer? Because I work in Manukau in South Auckland. I deal with a lot of first home buyers. Mm. The problem with first home buyers, firstly, they can afford the repayments, no yeah. doubt, because they can pay rent five, six hundred dollars a week. Mm. But almost ten out of ten first home buyers that we meet that that wants affordable home, but their credit criteria is terrible because they have high purchase, they got you know defaults. Therefore, when it comes to lending. That seems to be the major issue that holds them back. How would you overcome that part? Because if you can overcome that part, I believe you can achieve your goal. Well, um, we, there are a number of things that we can do to make it easier for first-time buyers. But the big thing is that we have to tackle the, the kind of structural supply and demand factors. We've got to increase the supply of housing. We've got to rein in the demand pressures that the national government refuses to do anything about. When we do those things, the price of housing will come down and it will be more affordable for first-home buyers. 
Yeah. We don't want to make, uh, I mean, one of the things you can do is you can provide more subsidies to help first home buyers get their deposit together, and the national government has done that. But what that does is it actually drives prices even higher. So it's not tackling the root causes of the problem. How would you speed up the council process? Because it's still, you know, the new leadership here came in, council say they've got to speed the process up. I personally haven't seen anything speed up at all. No. It still takes the same amount of time to get a consent, to get a building permit, to get resource consent. I myself managing quite a few projects now, it's still 15 months. Yeah. I still haven't got the answer. How would you change that? It's not good enough. And um, under the Resource Management Act, Labor will use what's called a national policy statement where central government tells the council they have to change their plan, do things differently. They've got to get rid of the urban growth boundary. They've got to allow the city to grow up, provide more apartments and townhouses and so on, uh, and change the way they do their consenting and planning decisions right. yeah. to allow the city to grow. At the moment we have a planning system that stops the city from growing. And all that does is that it drives house prices up. You know, I've been to Singapore recently and I was so inspired by their housing policy. They, their aim is to have every Singaporean to own a property. And what they do is they provide a $50,000 uh, deposit grant for you to buy your first, they only built apartments, they don't build houses because they haven't got enough land. Mm -hmm. And I, I was quite inspired by what I see there because, you know, like one, a few acres of land can put up like three, 4,000 apartments. You uh, 30,000 a year, mm -hmm. they give you 50,000 and you can't buy a second home until you pay off the first one and you've got to sell the first one to buy the second one. I thought, if any government can do that here in New Zealand, wouldn't that change the outcome of it? There's no doubt Singapore is, should be a source of inspiration for us. Um, you know, some people think that uh, the problems that we have in New Zealand now are, are problems of success. This is what National would like us to believe. All cities have these problems. That's not true. There are many countries around the world who have fixed these problems. Singapore's one of them. They've reined in the pressures of foreign money coming into their real estate market. They have quietened down the speculative pressures through tax and other measures. And, as you say, they've had a massive government-backed building program designed to help young families into their first homes. They've been very successful. The national government, Bill English, mentioned the other day that their surplus is like uh, 1.5 billion, was it? That's right. What would you do with that money if Neighbour was in government? Would you distribute some of that to the first home buy deposit grant? Um, we're, I think, more likely to invest the surpluses in paying down the debt, investing in the superannuation fund for future generations, and investing in things like education. We don't want to uh, increase the level of homeowner subsidies because if we do that, the risk in the current market, you'll just drive prices even higher. Right. What we want to do is, is tax speculators, shut foreign buyers out of the market to rein in those demand pressures and then on the other hand have a massive government-backed building program like Singapore has to increase the supply. If we do those things, we'll get the market back into balance, prices will uh, become much more affordable and, uh, and I think people will be a lot happier. Do you think we are ready for a change? You know, Nationals had their turn. Um, they've been denying there's a housing crisis for the last nine years. It's time we had some fresh thinking. And I think Andrew Little, Jacinda Ardern, and Labor's housing policies are exactly what the country's looking for. What do you think Andrew Labor's uh, recent uh, housing policy about uh, Claims on, on poppy speculators and get rid of negative gearing, mm. say hung in fifteen million dollars and giving it back to first home buy or, or fit out uh, warm housing. But mm. hung in fifteen million is can go just in twenty four hours, so that won't fit out many houses at all. So um, the savings we're going to make from closing the tax loophole that currently allows property investors to make a loss on a building and pay less tax. Um, the saving on that will be about $150 million a year once the policy is fully implemented. So over 10 years, that will generate $1.2 billion. That will allow us to uh, insulate and retrofit 600,000 houses over that 10-year period. Well, Phil, I'm so inspired of your message this morning. I want to thank you for coming on the show, and I, I wish the Labour government all the uh, best for the coming out election. Well, thanks for having me on. Thank I really, you. really appreciate it. That's the Don Howe Business Connect Show, Wednesday, 8pm.